I am Samira Uleila, and our journey takes us to Tanzania to explore the lives of local Muslim Tanzanians through various topics such as the Islamic education for boys and girls, the building of new mosques, the issue of orphans and widows, the livelihood of families through personal stories, and the importance of water for the local communities. I learn a lot from the various Muslim communities in Tanzania, but I also meet Tanzanians of other faiths, and I come across some insightful stories, such as the story of Joachim, a Christian local man who helps Muslims to build a new mosque, and the story of Lazaro, a young man from the famous Maasai tribe who tells me more about his own community. It is also a journey of challenges in which we experience heavy rains in Tanzania and very muddy roads that get our car stuck a few times in the mud. But the beauty of my trip is the warm welcoming given to me by the Tanzanian locals. So much affection, so many duas are given to me. Most of all, I learned this word, very powerful word that means thank you in Swahili, which is Asante. In this episode, I will visit various communities of rural Tanzania to explore the way people sustain their livelihood in terms of food, water, shelter, clothing, and livestock. Alongside the beautiful coastline of northeast Tanzania, I will be traveling to the villages of Tango, Kimanga, and Kigombe, and I will also be crossing the beautiful Pangani River to meet older and younger people to tell me how they secure the basic necessities to survive. I will hear the voices of outspoken elder women who breed goats I will meet an old and inspiring healer who lives below the poverty line. I will listen to a visually impaired local man who is looked after by his beloved wife and children. I will come across a passionate farmer who breeds cows. And I will even meet members of the famous, legendary, and insightful Maasai tribe. This will be a true journey of discovery, a journey that indeed no one ever forgets. Tanzania is a young country with over half of the population under the age of 18. Although the statistics from the governments refer to low life expectancy rates, the number of people aged 60 years and over is increasing. Elderly play a key role in contributing to the social and economic fabric of the family. However, older people can become at risk when it comes to sustaining their livelihoods. I get to travel to Kimanga village, where I meet Moana Abdallah, an older lady who makes her living through the breeding and raising of goats, donated by a charity such as Islamic Help. She also takes care of her grandchildren. Very often, older women in Tanzania are either widowed or separated. They are often responsible for the care of their grandchildren, as very often the death of their adult children, essentially due to HIV, leave their grandchildren orphans from one parent or even both. I get to sit with Moana, her sister, and their grandchildren to hear more about Moana's livelihood and how she provides for her family. <laughs> Kwa 
ndio tunavyofanya hivyo uwe na hela au kama hivi uwe na bima unaenda zako kama huna bima ndio ushike hela zako kama huna unakufia nyumbani nilikuwa nimepewa marage sukari tambi mafuta ya kupikia ah mifugo nilipewa mimi ni mkubwa alipopewa mbuzi huyo mimi nilipewa kuku bahati mbaya wale wadudu wamekufa kuku wote hasa sina mfugo wote mimi nipo tu kuku alibaki anakumbuka jogoo tu lile mpaka sasa hivi lakini kuku aliingiliwa mule ndani ya kibanda mule wasubu kifika wanaondoa mmoja wawili mpaka wameisha hata sielewi kwa sababu hawambuzi hapa tulipoweka sisi hatukujua kama tukamoe au vipi waliachiwa tu Hmm. Atujauza hata mbuzi huyu? Mmoja hajauza. Jauza ni yule hata mmoja. Tuna kabadilisha. Tuna kabadilisha. <laughs> Nilisema hivi, pindi tu Mungu akijalia nikipata hela bora nunue mbuzi najua waweza kuja niendeleza baadaye. Kuliko kuku, kuku ndiko nimepata hasara wote wameingia ndani ya mdondo. Ndio maana ma, mahitaji yangu ninavyofikiria mimi binafsi wa labda mbuzi atakuja ni nitoa maisha mazuri baadaye As I talk to Mwana I can't help to engage with Mwana's sister in conversation She is quite a vocal and very outspoken old lady Her name is Kiyakaz and she happily engages in a very interesting monologue instead to my delight Hakuna jina Nice and happy. Yes, and happy. <laughs> But it's a pleasure for me to meet you, Mama. I'm very happy. Can I stay with you? Can I stay? Yes. Yeah. She's very happy. She's very happy. She's happy. She says that you have to stay here. Before I leave Moana, I get to see how her goats are looked after by the man she pays to do so. A tedious task for him, to say the least, as it implies a lot of effort and a lot of running too. My next journey to visit another village is quite chaotic as we are faced with heavy rain while we are driving. The road gets very muddy and the driver struggles to drive through the heavy flow of water. Unfortunately, our car gets stuck in the mud. It is a real struggle to get moving. After many tedious attempts, we finally manage to get going again. We head towards the Pangani River, which is a major river in northeastern Tanzania. It is a lovely and picturesque place and the crossing of the river on a small ferry goes in a smooth way. I take the opportunity to photograph and capture the scenic location during the crossing with local people to reach the other side of the river. I then head to the village of Tango to meet Hamis Aid Abdullah, a wise old man who has spent his entire life working as a healer for his own community. Many people in Tanzania and across Africa seek advice from healers to cure illnesses. This is usually how healers or shamans make their own living and they remain important figures in rural areas. Sadly, Hamis is struggling to have a decent life and lives below the poverty line. Hamis, who lost his wife, is supported by some members of his family. He kindly gives me some time to hear his story. Nangu naitwa Hamisidi. Abdallah. Hamisidi Abdallah. Nilikozaliwa ni kijiji cha Miono. Kitongoji cha Masimbani. 
boma la Bagamoyo Dar es Salaam Ah hiki kijiji mimi ni mgeni nacho nimekuja tu kulima eh lakini maisha yangu yote ni mkaramo station eh, railway mimi nimefuata mtoto alioa huko papo shamba naona ndio akaniambia kaa hapa mjomba tukae hapa tulime ndio nimefuata mtoto wa dada yangu sio mtoto wangu mimi mtoto wa dada baba mmoja mama mmoja kwa sababu huyo marehemu mamawe alikufa nikabaki mimi peke yangu kazi yangu ni kuzunguka kuwatembelea watoto uh, watoto nao lakini mke alikufa hapo nilikuwa naishi na kazi zangu za kiutamaduni uganga wa kienyeji eh, na marehemu mzee tekelo eh mwingereza amekwambia anarojia au ni too late mimi ninachokitaka ni kujiondoa hapa nilipo nilime nipate kipato kizuri kama nipate mani mani ya nijenge au nifanye nini ndio maana yako okay I will never forget the face of Hamis, a face marked by years of hardship, but yet so much wisdom arises from this patient old man. As I am about to leave Hamis, one of his good friends, Matua Ali, wants to show me how he makes himself a living with breeding cows, and he takes me to see his animals, which provide him with milk sufficient to feed his entire family. Is he planning to sell any of his cows or is he planning to keep all of them? Ah, sija kuwa na mpango wa kuuza kwa sababu bado naona kidogo. Kwa hiyo bado na endelea endelea niangalie Mwenyezi Mungu mbele kama utazidi kipi. If he had to sell one, how much roughly does it sell for? Eh, bei ya ngombe huyu kwa samani yake nilivyoambiwa labda milioni 1 na laki hizo 2. Matua is more fortunate than Hamis, and he benefits from the support of a charity, such as Islamic Help, which has put together a livestock project that has distributed in the last few years thousands of goats and hundreds of cows of improved breed to help people like Matua to achieve a threefold increased market value for their products, meaning that locals, such as Matua, can breed their animals, sell them, and also benefit from the milk to feed the families. My next trip takes me to Kimanga village to meet an insightful local man, Mikdadi Hassan, a blind man who lives with his wife and two children in a modest house made of mud. Hassan wants to tell me about his tragic story and the reason why he lost his eyesight and how his wife, Aziza, support him with the whole household through livelihood activities. Ndio naishi nazo hapa ni ngumu. Kwa sababu kwanza natumia sana kuomba omba. Na hii biashara kuomba omba haisi swala la kuongea nao kwamba utaendelea nalo. Lakini ninachoomba omba lengo langu hasa nilikuwa ni kupata zile misingi na zile nyenzo. Lakini mtu atachokupa sasa hivi ni shela ya kula ngao 300 Na pia hapo pia ile pia kuipata ni ngumu. Kwa hiyo tunaishi si kwa kubahatisha sasa nyingine tunakosa mpaka kula. Mna vizuri eh? Yaani kula yetu sisi yani ya kubahatisha. Labda mke wangu atoke, labda akakate mzigo wa kuni, labda akauze. Mna vizuri eh? Lakini yote haya kama nitapata misingi, basi hata mke wangu hata kata mzigo wa kuni, wala hata kuna kibarua ambacho cha kusafisha nyumba hatofanya. Kwa sababu tunazo nye, tunazo tunao tuna uwezo mimi kama mimi kufanya biashara. Hivi nilivyo kama nilivyokuambia. Na nao uwezo mke wangu kuweza kufanya biashara zake kama vile za nguo zikushona na kila kitu kisa zile nyenzo zote hamna na misingi hamna kwa hiyo namtegemea mke na kuomba omba yani mke wangu ile pale saa nyingine akate mzigo wa kuni abebe ampelekee mtu auze ndio tupate riski lakini pia uwezo wa kulima sasa hivi ni mdogo kupeke yake kwa sababu mambo ya nyumbani yote namsubiri yeye kwa hiyo hata kama atalima sana sana ikijiweka kimoja sasa kiweka kimoja akizi kukizi mahitaji ya mwaka mzima wa chakula Hiyo changamoto kwa sababu ni mwanadamu na nimeumbwa. 
kukutana mitani jambo la kawaida kwa hiyo uislamu wangu ndio unanisajili kwamba ina imani kwamba matatizo yote unipe kwa sababu ya Mwenyezi Mungu kunipa mtihani huu basi tabii mimi nipambane ndoto maisha yangu kwanza kwa sababu kwanza kitu kikubwa sana kwamba mzazi hajatuachia nyumba ya kudumu lakini eneo ametuachia jambo la kwanza likuwa ni kujenga nyumba ya kudumu ambayo ya broko lakini sasa hivi leo imenishinda kujenga nyumba ya broko hilo changamoto ya kwanza ni kujenga nyumba ya broko kwa sababu eneo tunalo tupate nyumba ya kudumu changamoto nyingine ilikuwa ni jitahidi kwa sababu mimi nimekosa elimu nijitahidi zaidi kuwasomesha wanangu ili wafike mbali zaidi hizo ndio ndoto zangu sana kwanza ni kupata nyumba ya kudumu kwa sababu eneo tunalo baba yetu hajatuachia urithi wa nyumba ya kudumu jambo jingine linalofuatilia kwamba wanangu mimi nimekosa elimu eh, ya sekondari lakini wanangu ilikuwa wasome nipiganie mpaka wanangu wafike elimu ya juu Before I leave Migdadi's home his wife Aziza shows me around the modest house and she tells me about the hardship of their life but what strikes me is her positiveness and her smile and what strikes me even more is that despite the difficulty of her life the burden of the household and being a full-time carer for her husband Aziza doesn't complain once she keeps her smile that is what keeps her going as we get on the road again another incident happens with our car and it gets stuck again on a muddy road and this time it is a whole community that comes to our rescue it is quite a touching moment old men young men and children give us a helping hand it is heartwarming to see so much unity as we leave the small village children come running after our car to bid farewell to us as usual with smiles and laughter and this is truly typical of Tanzanians warm culture I am on my way for my last visit to a village near Kingombe but as I stop halfway through to do some filming I spot across the road two members of the Maasai legendary tribe and to my surprise they come to say hello to me which is a great opportunity to get a glimpse of the Maasai tradition and I feel truly privileged to be able to listen to Lazaro So my my name is Lazaro Jacob so I'm, I'm here to 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 this uh, Maasai land you you and you have a keto you know it is not it is outside or to here but uh, it's not far so yeah you you, you, you have a family Maasai yeah Maasai it is a tribe see in in Africa so you have a you have a different behavior than than many tribes of Africa continent so yeah when I, when you when you when you when you get get many cows yeah you can you can buy so you can get it maybe so Masai you live you and it's not Masai is not live here at maybe village yeah, maybe town how far is your community from this village in, in this village so uh, how far do you come oh, okay yeah it is a uh, from uh, from my home to come at here so i, ha I have a i have a 40 45 minutes yeah where you come at here on so, foot and foot oh. yeah foot so you have a <coughs> so you you yeah may, may, maybe at where are you at maybe you live at a village so you have a you have a maybe problems maybe you can't don't have a water yeah you know tell us about what makes the beauty of your tribe the Maasai tribe because we have heard so much about it in England in France tell me what makes the beauty of your tribe and this is somebody as well from your tribe as well yeah <laughs> yes My tribe see it is it is very nice so maybe tribe see you and near from in Europe in America so you have a same and the and the middle 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 east middle east maybe with their beads and brightly colored dresses the Maasai of northern Tanzania are one of the most well known ethnic groups of Africa 430,000 Maasai live in Tanzania. There are around 2.5 million Maasai in both Tanzania and Kenya. And unlike many other tribes in Tanzania, the Maasai are semi-nomadic. They make a living by herding cattle, sheep and goats. 
but they also have the dangerous task of hunting lions. Although the practice of lion hunting and other wildlife has been banned in East Africa, lions, species at risk, are never hunted for fun. And this practice can result in the Maasai farmers being injured or killed by trying to save their livestock. Lion attacks on livestock have become more frequent in Tanzania, where people and wildlife are increasingly living side by side. And the Maasai farmers usually use revenge killing of lions for the loss of their livestock. Younger generations in the Maasai communities in Tanzania have different ambitions and they have also dreams. They simply want to improve their lives by doing inspiring jobs, as Lazaro points out to me. My dream is a, is a teacher. Yeah, my dream is a teacher, maybe. Yeah. Why, why do you want to be a teacher? I, lo I love this, you're, you're working for a teacher, because a teacher, when you get a teacher, you teach many people. This journey in Tanzania opened my eyes on the various ways Tanzanian people adopt to survive in rural areas thanks to their livelihood. Meeting rural Tanzanians from all walks of life, having a glimpse of their everyday life by going to the most remote villages, hearing their most insightful stories, has allowed me to understand the deep meaning of livelihood. It has also left me with this magnificent image of a beautifully diverse country.